What's going on you guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Danny and I have a 5.9 liter, 1996 5.9 liter V8 Magnum uh, 360. And when I bought my truck, it was bone stock with 84,000 miles. It now has 96,284 miles. In this video, I'm not going to be talking about or be doing any installations. What I will be doing is I will be talking about my uh, last video that I put up with the dual 14 inch fans and what I've done since then and why I've done the things that I've done um, since that last video. So go ahead and stick around because if you are thinking about doing any kind of uh, e-fan swap or clutch fan delete or anything like that and you know maybe you have some questions this video might help you out because there's a lot of things that i had to figure out along the way to make these things work properly all right so three reasons why i did my clutch fan delete right reason number one is because of the parasitic draw it steals power and it makes your um your engine a little bit less efficient so the way that a clutch fan works for those, for those of you that aren't aware of how they work they're driven by the engine itself and these fans at least the one that i have has uh like five big fan blades and they're all steel they're metal this thing is heavy it's probably like five six pounds for a fan so if you think about it it's kind of like grabbing tie a five pound uh a five pound weight plate and spin it over your head as fast as you can you know what i mean it takes a lot of physical exertion it takes a lot of energy and it's the same thing for the motor the motor has to spin these heavy fan blades and be cutting through the wind the entire time that you're driving for the moment that you start it to the moment that you turn it off what it does is it steals power parasitically and by removing that it frees up horsepower it doesn't create horsepower it frees up horsepower and on these trucks anywhere between like i'd say like 7 to 15 maybe 20 horsepower um, but more between like maybe 10 to 15 and reason number two is because it it actually uh the one of the first things that i noticed when i went to the pump was fuel efficiency right it gave me about one more mile per gallon now you guys might think oh that's not a lot but this is in town in city city driving it uh for my truck it's a 34 gallon tank so it saves me about nine dollars and fifty cents per fill up right? That, that's a lot, guys. I mean, if I only have 96,000 miles, I'm probably going to have my truck for, I don't know, close to 300,000 miles. That's a lot in savings when it comes down to fuel consumption. So fuel efficiency is a number is, is number two. And number three is just, you know, cleaning up the engine bay, right? Now you don't have that big fan shroud that's in the way. It has a lot more room to work. If something happens, I have to remove pulleys. I have to replace my water pump, uh, replace my fan belt or my, um, my serpentine belt. Uh, it, it's it's a lot easier because now I don't have that big fan shroud in the way and now I don't have to remove that clutch fan and those clutch fans are not always easy to remove. I mean, they're, it's it's tough to remove them. That's why they make like impact wrenches, tools for them and everything. So if my truck ever breaks down while I'm on the road, it's a lot easier to work on it if I have to. The 14 inch fans, they were working out fine. Uh, as soon as I installed them, I was driving it around town. Everything was cool. Everything was gravy. No problems. Hooked up my trailer. I have two trailers. You can probably see one in the back. It's a travel trailer, 30 foot trailer. And I have a dump trailer that I use for work. When loaded, it's anywhere between, um, you know, 65 to 7,000 pounds. As soon as I hooked up my trailer, my engine started getting warm and then it started getting hot. And then I started getting scared because, um, I don't want my engine to get too hot. So one of the things that i didn't know back then you see a lot of these guys a lot of these hot rod guys talking about uh you know people that do races and stuff like that logically speaking right you got to think about this right i didn't think about this at the time you can have a big motor a big block producing a lot of horsepower turbos and superchargers and everything and have an e-fan in it and it'll work but the thing is is that these guys they're racing they're, they they have high horsepower for 12 seconds right 10 seconds or nine seconds or whatever it is for the quarter mile or eighth mile or whatever and after that they run their engine nice and cool and right back to the you know to the beginning of the drag strip while their engine is cooling that doesn't apply to trucks right if you're doing it to trucks and you're pulling up a grade that's you know seven eight nine percent that engine is going to be hot that engine is pulling all all seven or ten or fifteen thousand pounds that you got in the back you got to pull that weight all the way up your RPMs are super high and you got to go up to like 8,000 feet elevation, 10,000 feet elevation. 
you're going to be stressing that motor a lot for a long time instead of just doing running at eighth mile with a big 454 block or something like that that is key that's important that's something you have to take in consideration because the clutch fan pulls a lot of air it it pulls air relative to how fast your engine is spinning because it's using the pulley to spin the fan blades. But one thing that I didn't know and that I didn't think about back then simply because of lack of experience, and I'm just sharing this with you guys so you guys kind of know how to tackle on this issue, right, is what are you going to be demanding from your vehicle? What are you demanding from your car or your truck? Because you can do this to either one. Are you going to be towing with it? Or is it just your weekend car just driving it around? Is it a car, you know? Um, is it a big block truck? That's the thing that you want to identify first. That's the first thing that you want to be like, okay, this is what I'm be doing with it. This is the kind of fans I need. I decided to get those 14 inch fans out, right? And actually before I got those 14 inch fans, I thought like, okay, maybe the fan blades aren't spinning fast enough. What do I need? Bigger motors. Put bigger motors on there, literally twice as strong. I went from 80 watt to 180 watt fans, um, which were pulling together i believe it was like 20 uh like 26 amps or something like that spinning a lot faster so now the issue that i came with is that these fans were spinning so fast that they were making my whole truck shake which is good because they were pulling a lot more air but i want to get rid of that fan shake and um a good friend of mine uh he put 16 inch fans and he's like dude he's like the 16 inch fan 16 inch fans are a lot more quiet and they you know they just work better so I put 16 inch fans and yeah, I mean, I was pulling more air because the fan was bigger and the fan blades were also covering more surface area on the radiator. Now, if you have now, if you saw my last video, you saw that I didn't just slap them on the radiator. I did a fan shroud, right? And the reason why you want a fan shroud is because it'll, if you just put it right over the radiator, it's going to suck air just from that area specifically. You don't want to do that. A lot of hot rodder guys do that and that's not a good idea. That's why the engineers, that make these vehicles put fan shrouds so you can pull oxygen air through the whole radiator that's what you want you want the whole surface area covered and pulling air through the whole thing don't put radiate don't put your fan just on the radiator because you'll just pull air through it and it's inefficient and it's just it's it's stupid i don't know why people do it but that being said uh the 16 inch fans i put them on and i took my truck out for a spin um it was running fine came back hooked up my my uh my trailer and this was empty trailer it was only 2500 pounds i was pulling right went up some hills and it started getting warm again um now these fans were pulling more air they were more uh the more of a uh, amp draw and so they did work out right they were pulling they were more effective um they were pulling together i'd say about i don't know 3000 cfm or something uh because i think they were like at 1500 cfm each if i remember right if my memory serves me right so once uh i was kind of like okay my engine is still getting hot then i thought maybe there's something wrong with my engine maybe there's something wrong with my t-stat maybe it's sticking it's opening up late or something so i decided to take out those fans put on the clutch fan i put it on and you know it was working out fine um there was no problems with my t-stat there was no problems with um overheating issues anything like that my engine was running perfectly fine operating temperature it was between like 190 to 195 no problems at all so then i decided okay i need more powerful fans i need more power and at this point if i needed more power now i need a bigger alternator i had to go on to uh, jsalternators.com which uh, they make really really good alternators and they have a lifetime warranty guys so if you're looking at alternators those those guys are really good with their stuff decided to get a one wire 300 amp alternator for this truck and th that alternator makes a lot a big difference <laughs> my windows fly up and down now ever since i put that alternator it makes everything just work so much better and so much more consistently because now my power doesn't go all the way down or you know below 14 volts um and it also gives my fans more power i noticed it gives them more, now they pull more amps which equals to more cfm and i did this testing so i'm not just speaking theoretically i use a clamp meter and i use an anemometer to test these things but i was still underpowering or under cooling my engine block 
So then I was like, okay, I'm gonna get rid of all these things. I'm gonna get rid of my my 16 inch fans. I'm gonna get rid of my fan motors. I need some serious pulling power, right? Cooling power. So I went to the junkyard, to my local pick and pull, pull apart, you know, uh, bone yard or whatever you guys call it. And I got a 18 inch Thunderbird fan, right? I think it was a 1995. And that thing is huge. It's almost the exact same size as my clutch fan. The clutch fan, I believe, is a 19 and a half inch. And these fans are like an 18 and a quarter. So it's pretty big. It's almost the exact same size. And when I hooked up that fan, man, that fan pulls a lot of air because it's a bigger... The fan blade, I mean, anybody that knows, right, knows that the engineers that develop things for stock vehicles, they design them in a way so that they don't break right and two so they're they have maximum efficiency right so oem fans are always best they're better than spall fans i tried the 16 inch spall fans that thing sucked i got the low boy 16 inch polar advertised at uh 25 or 3000 cfm i was only getting like 1300 or 1400 so i returned that sucker back to amazon because i was like dude it's not even i put my client meter on it and they said it would pull I think 19 amps, 18 or 19, it was only pulling 16 amps. And this was with my high output alternator, mind you. So uh, I know I wasn't um, lacking in power. I've heard good things from the other fans, but that low boy 16 inch puller, I don't know if maybe it was just a bad batch, but it sucked. So I sent that one back and it was $161, guys. That's expensive for a fan. And that was only one. So I put that fan on and it made a pretty big difference um hooked up my trailer took it up some grades and it was it was working out good so i thought okay now i'm going to um go up some long grades right that were maybe like seven eight percent on the highway and that were pretty long a lot of in the area where i live it's very hilly and so my engine started getting warm again right and then it started getting maybe past 200 it got to like 202 203 or something like that and i know that that's not super hot but it's above operating temperature which means that if i'm towing for a long time it's definitely going to get above that and then i did some digging and i found out okay that these trucks pull about 4000 cfm when your truck is up to like 35 a hundred rpm right if you're going up hills and grades and everything because one thing you got to keep in mind guys is if you're pulling a trailer you're not going 65 70 miles an hour up a really big hill sometimes you're going 45 40 miles an hour if you have a like a big load if you're pulling a lot of weight and your engine is stressing and pulling your your rpms are high right your your motor is spinning as fast as it can trying to produce as much power and you're not getting that much ram air through the front now yeah 45 miles an hour you're getting a pretty significant amount of air ram air but your clutch fan is also spinning that much faster to help pull that much more air to keep your engine cool so you need stronger fans and if you only have fans that are pulling you know 1500 cfm each that's not going to do anything so i decided okay i returned that thunderbird fan right and i thought okay i'm just going to go and get the Lincoln Mark 8 fan because that is kind of the, uh, the from everything that I read on forums, that is the go to fan, right? The Lincoln Mark 8 uh, pulls an obscene amount of air. And I bought one, right? I actually got two of them and I hooked it up to my battery, you know, truck turned off or whatever. And I was pulling 40 amps, guys. That's crazy. Truck not even turned on. So I was only at 12 volts. And I didn't use my anemometer, but it was moving a ton of air. This thing was like, it felt like a damn jet turbine, man. This thing was almost, it's kind of scary to hold, honestly, because I was holding it with one hand and holding the wires with the other one. Just take my word for it, guys. It moves a lot of air, probably three times more than my other two fans. And yeah, so I got those two fans. And so now my next video, my next thing is going to be I'm going to be installing dual 18 inch Lincoln Mark 8 fans, which I hear that a lot of people say that one fan is good enough, but that's for street applications, right? A lot of people don't use these for towing. They use them for hot rods and all that crap. And again, like I said just now, that doesn't apply to these, right? I'm not running it just for a short distance. I'm running it for 
a long time up hills with a lot of weight. So I want to have all that maximum cooling efficiency and without having to use my without having to use a clutch fan. So my next video is going to be installation for that. I'm going to be uh, somehow fabricating or figuring out how to install these dual 18 because I have, I think it's like three inch, they come out about three inches on each side. So I'm gonna have to figure out something to make these fans work. So uh, yeah, just wanted to let you guys know what I had been doing, what I've been, what, what I've done so far. I actually also put in a bigger alternator, like I told you guys, the JS alternator 300 amp, and I did do the big four upgrade, big five, whatever you wanna call it, where you replace all the wiring to the alternator, your engine ground, battery grounds, um, power wire, all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you guys that in the next video. But um, for today, that's it, you guys. So if you have any questions, go ahead and just put them down in the comments below so I can help you guys out, because like I said, I had to go through a lot trying to figure out how to make these e-fans work. So I will likely be able to help you guys. But yeah, that's it for today, you guys. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching the video. I know it was a little bit longer of a video, um, but I really wanted to make this video for you guys because I felt like there's a lot of value in this and a lot of information that I wish I knew when I was building my, my uh, electric van setup. So like I said, that's it for today, you guys. Hope you guys are having a great Thanksgiving um, and I'll talk to you guys later.